Chapter 5 of Eldamar and the Princes of the Eldalie. Eldalie is just another term for Eldar. Okay, so let's rewind a bit from where we left off in the last chapter. The Vanyar and the Noldor are too afraid to cross the ocean, and the Teleri are in the east of Beleriand, with some of them searching for Elwë, who is currently being enchanted by Melian. So Orome finally comes back to the elves on the coast. As you can see by the map, there is a sort of ice bridge in the north connecting Middle-earth to Aman. It's way too cold and dangerous up there, so he doesn't take them that way. Instead, Ulmo comes to the shore and sort of convinces them not to be afraid of the sea by blowing his horn and making music. He persuades them that the sea is not so bad. Then he takes an island that's just out in the middle of the ocean and moves it to the shore. Then the Vanyar and Noldor get on and the island ferries them across the sea and they finally get to the Undying Lands. But the Teleri, remember, are too far east and inland to hear the lovely water music and besides, a bunch of them are still searching for Elwë, aka Thingol, and they wouldn't have left him behind anyway. But when the majority of the group of Teleri finally get word that the Vanyar and Noldor have left, they immediately go to the shore. This is when they take Olwë to be their sole king. So Olwë and the bulk of the Teleri are on the coast, and they wait there for a really long time. And during that time, Ulmo's servant, the Maya Osse, remember him? He is the Maya of waves and stormy seas. Well, he befriends the Teleri and teaches them all manner of sea lore and sea music. He just has a grand old time hanging out with them, and he falls in love with the shores of Middle-earth. He's having a fun time. But the Noldor over in Aman really miss their Teleran friends, and they want to see them again. So they pray to Ulmo, who finally goes to the coast of Middle-earth and basically says, Okay, Osse, party's over. I gotta bring these people to Aman. And Osse's like, no, I'm having so much fun with them. So Osse actually manages to persuade a few Teleri on the coast to stay behind in Middle-earth. But the majority of them do leave with Ulmo to the Undying Lands. And the few who stay behind on the coasts of Beleriand are later called the Falathrim, or People of the Coast. Over time, Osse teaches them shipbuilding, and they take Círdan as their lord. Remember at the end of Return of the King when Elrond and Galadriel and Frodo, etc. sail to the west? Well, that ship was built by the Falathrim, and the elves of the Grey Havens are the Falathrim. And I'm pretty sure that that guy's supposed to be Círdan. So these are the Sindar now, the Teleri of Beleriand. We've got Elway's people who remain inland in the forest, and the Falathrim led by Círdan on the coast. Elway's people would have gladly gone to Aman, but they were too loyal to him to leave him behind, still lost, and because they have this low-key yearning for the West, they don't live anywhere near the sea because it would just be too painful of a reminder of what could have been. And when Elwë finally emerges from his enchantment and he and Melian come out of the woods, his people find them and they're all amazed because they notice a change in their king. He was fair and noble before he got entranced, but now they feel like he looks like a Maya. And we know that his hair is gray silver, and he is actually the tallest child of Iluvatar to have ever lived. So he's taller than all elves who've ever lived, and all men who've ever lived. Meanwhile, Olwë and the majority of the Teleri are on the island ferry going west across the sea. And they get to the bay of El Damar in Aman. But Osse is behind them and calls out to them, and they go, Oh, hey, we remember that guy. Ulmo, wait a minute. Our friend Osse is calling out to us. Stop the island. And Ulmo just stops it. Because he, remember, he was never actually married to the idea of the elves leaving Middle Earth in the first place. So he just plants the island in the middle of the bay. Eh, close enough, you know. The Valar aren't really happy about this, but oh well. So now the island is named Tol Eressea meaning Lonely Isle. So the Vanyar and the Noldor actually live on Aman in the light of the trees, but they, some, they sometimes still want to see the stars. 
So the Valar make a gap or valley in the Pelori Mountains. And this pass in the mountains is called Kalakiria. Remember the only bright light in the world comes from the two trees? So in order to actually see the stars, the elves would need to go to the dark side of the Pelori where the trees aren't shining. The light shines on the western shore of the Lonely Isle as well, now that there's a gap in the mountains. Anyway, in the Kalakiria Pass is raised a very large hill called Tuna. On this hill, the Vanyar and Noldor build the city of Tyrion, and the two peoples live there for quite a while. Yavanna even makes them a special tree that kind of looks like Telperion, so it's a nice place. For a long time, the Teleri live on Tol Eresea. But after a while, most of them start to wish that they could be closer to the other elf groups and to the light of the two trees. So the Valar tell Ulmo to get them to Aman proper. Bring them here. So kind of begrudgingly, Ulmo tells Osse to go get them. And he teaches these guys shipbuilding too. And Osse is sad to see them leave the island, but once they build their ships, he brings swans as a parting gift, and the swans pull the ships to the shores of Amman. You see the word Eldamar, that just refers to the region where the elves mainly live in Amman. The elves aren't living all over the continent, it's a big place, they're only congregated in a fairly localized area on the map that I've shown you. Okay, so the vast majority of the Teleri who were on the Lonely Isle land on the shore of Aman. They then establish their own city called Alqualonde, or Haven of the Swans. And it's a beautiful city with many lamps and mansions of pearl. The Noldor give them a bunch of jewels that they use to decorate their pools, and the beaches are just beautiful. It's a lovely place. The entrance to the harbor is an arch of sea-carved rock, and the Teleri can wander anywhere, near the two trees, in the city of Valmar, visit their Noldor friends, go sailing, go to the beach. Life is awesome. After a time, the Vanyar eventually move away from Tyrion and go closer to where the Valar live. So they live near Manwe and in the plains and woods of Valinor. They get as close to the trees as possible. Meanwhile, the Noldor stay in Tyrion as well as throughout the Kalakiria valley. And they also just travel far and wide throughout Amman because they like exploring. At the back of your book, you have genealogical charts of the major elf characters in the story. This chapter contains most of them. I have made my own chart based on these genealogical trees so that they're all on the same page just for convenience. Let's go through only what we already know so far. So here's an incomplete chart. We know Elwë is married to Melian the Maya, and they're over in Beleriand, and we already know that he and Olwë are brothers, and we know that Olwë and the majority of the Teleri are in the Undying Lands. Finwë is king of the Noldor, and he is originally married to Miriel, but she dies. Don't worry, we'll see why later on and all the circumstances surrounding it. But just know, she dies, and then he marries Indis, who is a Vanyaran elf. The only child that Finwë and Miriel have is Feanor. He is a major player in the Silmarillion, a very important character. Do not forget his name. It says his spirit burns as a flame, which is actually the meaning of his name. Fea means spirit and Nor means fire. And his half-brothers are Fingolfin and Finarfin. Feanor is more learned and skilled in crafts than his brothers. Fingolfin is the strongest, most steadfast and brave, and Finarfin is the fairest and wisest of his brothers. He becomes friends to Olwë's family and marries Olwë's daughter, Earwen. Feanor has seven sons, Maedhros the tall. He has dark red hair and he's very handsome. Maglor who is famous for being a great singer, Kelegorm, the fair, who is a great hunter and learns all about animals from Orome, Karanthir, the dark, he has a ruddy complexion, Kurufin, the crafty, who is most like his father in skill and personality, and the twins, Amrod and Amras, 
they are great hunters, and, like Maidros, they also have red hair. The children of Fingolfin are Fingon, who much later becomes High King of the Noldor. He is known as the Valiant. And Turgon, who becomes king of the hidden city of Gondolin. You'll hear all about that later. And their sister, Aravel. She is pale and beautiful, with dark hair, and she always wears silver and white. She likes to go horseback riding and hunting, and she hangs out a lot with her cousins, the sons of Feanor. The children of Finarfin are Finrod, the faithful, called fairest and most beloved of the house of Finwë. Orodreth, the warriors Angrod and Aignor, and Galadriel. You know her. Her hair was lit with gold, as though it had caught in a mesh the radiance of Laurelin. 